Hey fellow art teachers, Lindsay Moss here, coming to you again from Yorkville, Illinois for the latest episode of 123 ART, hosted by the Art of Education University. If you've been with us for previous episodes, by now you know that we're meeting the moment. We're not talking about learning loss, we're talking about a group of very resilient kids who's ready for their first in-person experience in art this fall in kindergarten or first grade. So in this particular episode, we're gonna be talking about paint. Now, painting is magical. It's by far the first thing that my kindergartners request the most often and the first thing they ask for when they come to an art class. So I wanna make sure they get all kinds of painting experiences, but there's a lot of moving parts with paint. So how do you help students that may not have painted before? Well, in this episode, we're gonna cover several ideas that will help make that successful. First tip I have for you is to cover the surface of your table. There's a lot of things that you can cover a table with to make cleanup a little bit easier. It could be messy mats. We're familiar with that idea from classrooms, which can either be a piece of construction paper or something laminated. It goes underneath the painting so the kids can go all the way to the edge without being worried about paint getting on the table. You could also use butcher block paper over your table or even drop cloths or old tablecloths that can go over a table during a painting experience. Once you got the surface ready, let's talk about brushes that are best for kids who may not have painted before. Um, I'm gonna recommend a chunkier brush because I believe that a lot of our young artists this fall are gonna be really working on their pincher grasp. They were digital, so they didn't have a lot of pencil practice when they were younger. And so they may not be able to hold a, a brush quite right yet. So having it a little bit thicker in their hand is a great idea. And if you like some of these tools that I'm highlighting here, make sure that you check out information about them in the description below. Um, another great brush brush format to use is something with a chunky handle. Their little hand can fit around this and get a really good grip so they can make the marks that they want to. Besides brushes, I feel like the real elephant in the room when painting isn't actually the paint, it's the water, because it's a lot to navigate when you're dealing with water, brushes, paints, and paper, that's a lot of executive functioning, a lot of things to manage for our littlest artist. So how do you ensure that they can get the water without the frustration and potential embarrassment of spilling it? We know that happens, but sometimes it still hurts their little feelings. You may have actually seen cups like this advertised before for holding tempera paint, but I think they're really great for water because you have a smaller hole that the brush goes in and you have sort of this angled side that can help get excess water off the brush before you put it into your paint and it's lidded, so it kind of spills a little less. Or this is a staple from my classroom. I love um, dog dishes or pet bowls from the dollar store. That wide base makes it easier for a kid to splash around with their brush without having it actually tip over and spill all over their project or their table. You're gonna put your brush in and you're gonna like give it a marks? nice drink. I feel like water is kind of a heavy lift for kids, right? Um, you have to put your brush in the water and then you have to put it in the paint and then you have to put it to paper. What if you cut out one of those steps for their first painting experience? You can see here Anastasia painting with water on construction paper. It's magical for her and she's not even using paint. This is great practice because she can go from the water cup to the paper with her brush and she can practice kind of loading that brush down with water and swishing it out, making marks on the paper without having the interference of paint or the added step. This is a great beginning painting activity. Once you feel like your kiddos are ready for paint, I'm gonna really recommend limiting the palette. Uh, one easy way to do this is using tempera cakes. These are my favorite neon tempera cakes, but this works with other tempera cakes too. You can just pop out the tempera cake puck and you can put it onto a um, paper plate and you can kind of decide to use just warm colors or just cool colors. And having that limited palette makes kids a little bit more successful. That same idea is shown here in these large scale watercolors with these huge pans. There's less colors and it's easier for them to get a larger brush in there and really get some vibrant pigment onto their bristles. Okay, so these are called tempera cakes. And so to make them work, you have to have a little tiny puddle of water. 
Yeah, because feel, it feels kind of hard right now. And you're gonna tickle the top of it. Tickle, 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 tickle. And then you change. Yeah. Do you know what to do when you change a color? Yeah, just like JD. You're gonna give it a little bath. I'm just kind of curious what sort of painting supplies you're using for your young artists in your art room. Uh, drop a comment below so we can read about what's working for you. And of course, while you're here, don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss any upcoming episodes of 123 ART or other content coming from the Art of Education University. Thank you.